I really hope I aligned myself correctly in the camera for that. Okay, if you clicked on this video, then you are already curious, just like I was, what these are. These are the Soul Reading Glasses, and they are an e-reader that you wear on your face. You have two stamp-sized e-ink screens for each eye, and when they align together, you see one image in front of you that I would say is probably a couple of feet away and relatively large, so you can relax your eyes, read in private at any time of the day and anywhere. And this promise was very interesting to me, but in practice, it is a very different experience. When I first saw Soul's marketing, I was very intrigued. It's very high in marketing. It is really smart. It really focuses on the one core use of this device, which is just to have glasses that you can read in. You don't need VR. You don't need AR. You just need an e-ink screen close to your eyes. And as a Kindle lover, I was very interested by this premise. But to be honest, I totally forgot about this company because the product launch was months and months away last year, and I never followed up until recently. So to my surprise, Soul not only launched, but they launched at a really competitive price. These glasses are $249, which is the cost of like a high-end Kindle or other e-reader. So at that price, I had to jump in. I had to see what the fuss was about. I had to see if this is the future. And I honestly just wanted to see how good the device actually is because nobody else is talking about it. So here we are. I've been using these reading glasses for a couple of weeks now, and I've also been using a different e-reading tablet and a Kindle. And I'm really here to talk about what the experience is like on this device specifically. So we have the glasses right up front. This is the gold color. I think they call it rose gold. It does not look rose gold. They're pretty thick. Like you obviously have the lenses right up here. You have an adjustment to adjust like the width to match your eyes. And then the only way that you can actually turn on the glasses is by opening them. Inside the glasses, you get a pretty firm set of nose pads, and then you get the lenses themselves with little dials on the outside, so that way you can get them in focus for each one of your eyes. They only come in this design, and they only come in this size, which is honestly where one of my first problems began with this device, because the size of the actual device in the arms is too small for my head, which I know I'm a YouTuber, I have a big head. But when you're going to lay down and wear these and hopefully read for maybe an hour at a time, I definitely feel a lot of pressure at the back of my head and near my temples, and it's really uncomfortable and I haven't been able to use them for probably more than 20 minutes without feeling that pressure. So the actual optics themselves love the fact that they're customizable, but when the fit isn't customizable, it definitely causes some issues. I also had an issue with the glasses when I first updated them where they would not reboot after they were updated. And I actually learned that you can remove this centerpiece and you can change out the nose pads. And underneath this is a little button to be able to reset the device. So there is a physical control, but it is very intentionally hidden. To control the glasses, you actually have to use the included remote. Now this remote is obviously unlike it one I've ever seen before. It's got a very specific design and it's powered by a coin cell battery. And I like the idea of this remote, but I really don't like using it because it is just too small. Like I like the fact that it's really portable, but I have really small hands and I was never able to get like a really comfortable grip with the remote. And if this remote doesn't work or it disconnects or you lose it, there's no other way to control the glasses. Unless you pull out your phone and you use their app, but that is just a laggy experience and you can't even see what you're doing on your phone. So swiping around is like, it's like good luck to you. So I wanted to try these glasses because I obviously love reading on my Kindle. I love getting to read and being immersed in a book. And it is a really immersive experience because you cannot be distracted by the other things around you. So fit aside, they're too small for my head, but I will say being able to see underneath or over or even from the sides is helpful to be able to get your bearings, especially when you're moving around or you're going to like grab a drink. Like I can fully see everything from my nose under, which honestly is really helpful. That way I don't like bump into things or I like spill all over myself. So once you put the glasses on, they are not extremely heavy, but they're not light. I definitely feel a lot of the pressure on my nose. And honestly, these nose pads are not very cushioned. They're not very comfortable. So I do kind of wish that there was better nose pads that were more contoured to a nose or maybe a little bit forgiving since all of the weight of the device is at the very front. Once you have set up the glasses and you have everything connected, all you have to do is put them on and the onboarding experience was fine. 
It helps you measure the space in between your eyes, but then it doesn't tell you really how to adjust the focus of the glasses. And it took me a lot of trial and error to get it right. Each one of your eyes is different. And for me, both of my eyes are slightly different in the way that they focus. So it took me a really long time of like closing one eye and adjusting the focus and then closing the other and adjusting the focus because otherwise everything feels off. The edges are going to be blurred. The center will be sharp. You won't be able to estimate depth in the same way when these are are not perfectly adjusted and I will say if there's going to be any improvement it's probably going to be the fit and the way that these are actually customized because if you don't get it right I could see somebody getting really frustrated with these quickly but enough of all of this enough of all of the, the details and the and looking at it I want to get you guys into the glasses and show you what that experience is like when you actually go to read so bear with me I'm gonna try and film wearing the glasses so you can see what the screen actually looks like and what the reading experience is. The focus will not always be there. It will move around a little bit, but I think it'll give you a good idea of what to expect if you put them on. Okay, you guys, we're going to try our best here to show you what the inside of these glasses look like. Obviously, you're going to have a screen in, for both eyes, but I can only focus on one at a time with my phone. So what we're looking at here is the screen at full brightness. It's basically a postage stamp size screen, but when you have the glasses on, it definitely looks much bigger. It is comfortable to look at in some ways. There's a couple things I'll show you that are a little less comfortable, but I've gone ahead and opened a book that is actually preloaded onto the device. So you can see it is definitely a lower res e-ink screen than I would say most modern e-readers use, but it's, it's perfectly readable. So this is an image. And then if I go to the next page using the included remote, this is what the text looks like. Now, this text is not the most sharp. You can definitely see the pixels, but it is readable and there is a good amount of contrast when you're on light mode. You can go to dark mode, but it makes the entire screen refresh every single page and you still see ghosting. So it, I definitely wouldn't recommend it. This is the preferred version. The light you can actually see on the edges of the screen right here. So that is not the optics like tricking your eye. That is what the lights look like. You can definitely tell where they're coming from. And you can move where this text actually appears on the screen. So for my eyes, so I didn't have to move them very much, I actually chose to have them smaller and more in the center. So that way I could just look straight forward when I'm wearing the glasses. So as I move through pages, you can see that the e-ink does refresh every time. It works a little bit faster in light mode, so I've definitely kept that. And it's totally readable. My only issue with having to make this the text size this small is the fact that I have to change the page a lot like you this is not many words on the page so I am holding the remote and I am changing the page probably every 10 to 20 seconds the remote itself I'll get into in a minute but it's perfectly usable it's connected to the glasses every single time so the reading experience is not bad especially when you don't have to hold a device but it's definitely not as modern and this e-ink is definitely not as like updated and high tech as I expected it to be. You navigate with the device by only using the remote. There's no on device controls. So actually, if I want to open a menu, I have to press the up button and then you'll see I have my entire reading menu right here. So you can go through the contents. You can turn on autopilot, which basically just changes the page at a certain interval of seconds. You can go to the archive to see things there. You can change the brightness and you can see where you're at. So if I go back to the main menu is really simple. You actually have all of your different sections with a header right up top. You can see like this is Kindle. So I've actually been reading The Court of Silver Flames. That's embarrassing. I've been reading this like fairy smut book. It's this fantasy book. The fighting's good. But if I open this, what you'll notice is that it's connecting to my Kindle because they're actually emulating an Android device to be able to access the Kindle ecosystem. So you have to have Wi-Fi to access a Kindle book. And in this case, the glasses are connected to Wi-Fi at home, so it worked really fast. But when I was traveling recently, this took a very long time to the point that I wasn't even sure if it was still working anymore. And I just set the glasses down and came back to them a couple minutes later and we were connected. So after it connects to the Kindle ecosystem, it does have to like process and open the Kindle book. So I think it's preloading a couple of pages. So on one hand, it's annoying because you have to be connected to the internet and it takes a long time. But then on the other hand, it does sync your Kindle progress across devices, which is nice. And now it's telling me this could take up to 60 seconds. So we'll come back once it's actually loaded. Okay, so here we are, it has loaded. So 
Sorry if it looks out of focus, it does not when you finally get them adjusted, but obviously my camera is having a hard time with this. So reading the Kindle book works exactly the same as you would read the other books. You do have less options when you open this menu. You can only change the brightness and that's it. So if I go back to the main menu, we can see the other sections right here. If you've synced articles, if you ha they have the Bible built in because it was the first printed book is their reasoning. And then you have a bunch of settings where you can change the reading style, you can manage your content, you can connect it to Wi-Fi and update it, and then you're back to the first section. Okay, so that is a really high level overview of the reading experience. Thankfully, the device is pretty easy to navigate. I think that the interactions and like the UX make a lot of sense. And the reading experience is good, but it's not amazing. You have old outdated e-ink technology, so the refresh rate is really slow and the pixel is, and you definitely can tell that it's pixelated because the resolution is not that high. And normally on an e-ink device, like on an e-reader, these things wouldn't matter, but when they're so, when the screens are so close to your eye, it really does matter because it is so much easier to tell the imperfections and the details in the actual image that you're looking at. One way that I cannot show this on camera is that every e-ink screen sometimes has variations in the pixels so there will be a little bit of texture there might be a few black spots almost like a printed page and in the glasses because the e-ink screens aren't that great there are a ton of those little micro specks of black which definitely messes with your perception of depth like the text will be very clear like right here but if the text is right here and it's very clear there will be little points, some closer, some further away, some back here, some on the edge. You know what I mean? There'll be like a, a cloud of specs around that you kind of have to train yourself not to focus on because if you do, it's going to make your eyes work harder because they're not actually in your like perfect field of view when your eyes are relaxed. It might sound like a small thing, but you definitely notice it when you're staring at these screens for like 15, 20 minutes or longer. Another small note about the reading experience that doesn't come across on camera is it's whenever you go to change the page or the content of the page changes, the e-ink screens actually need a little bit of power to change that image. And at least to my ears, which I guess are really sensitive, I can hear the actual power and the like little electric buzzing for every single page turn. It's not super distracting, it's not super annoying, but it is there. And once again, when you have what is supposed to be a really immersive experience, having like pixels, floating on the screen and having this little noise kind of takes you out of that that what is intended to be a luxurious immersive experience i do really want to applaud soul for actually connecting with a kindle because i'm sure amazon has not made it easy for them there is not a direct partnership with kindle there's not direct access so when you do log into the kindle app you actually have to log in through an emulated device on the app so it will take a minute to load. You will have to log into your Amazon account to give their servers like access to your Amazon account and your Kindle. So that way they can stream the books to the glasses, which on a privacy standpoint, that is not good. I fully had to sign into my entire Amazon account on their server on like a fake phone. But I do applaud them for trying because otherwise if I wasn't able to read Kindle books at all, that would be a really big detractor of the device. That being said, it takes a while for the books to open, but once they do, I never had a problem with reading a Kindle book. So you might be wondering, is this for you? And to be honest, it's a really mixed bag. If you do not have a head as wide and as big as mine, I think that these would be more comfortable on you. And once you're able to dial in the fit and the focus, the experience is nice. Being able to just stare at a book in no matter the lighting and no matter the setting is a really nice feature. Especially if you're like me and you're reading like fairy fantasy smut and you don't necessarily wanna broadcast that to everybody around you. So if you have a smaller head, if you want privacy, if you want an immersive experience, if you have a partner that can't handle any light, if you just hate holding a device or you don't want to own something from Amazon, I definitely see that the, that the Soul Reader would be a really great option for you. That being said, I am very excited to see what a version two of this device is going to look like because I think that they are so close to having a really refined experience and one that I largely don't want to change. I want the experience to be to feel better and feel more premium and feel more streamlined. But there was never a moment where I wanted the glasses to actually do more besides just reading. So that is the sole reading glasses. They look weird. They work pretty well. They could be a lot better. 
And I think for $249, they might work for you. Or just wait until version two and you'll probably really, really love those. If you are curious about more details about how this experience stacks up to a traditional Kindle and actually to like an e-ink note-taking device, I actually have a video coming out where I'm going to be covering that. So go ahead and subscribe so that we can see that in the future. And if you have any questions, or you wanna know any specifics about the Soul Reader, please let me know in the comments below. And with that, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.